Let's talk about data types and variables. All right, we found us back in Tell Jones more. And in this tutorial of the Java introduction, we're going to be talking about data types and variables over here. And this time, we're actually starting with some code already written, but we'll go through from top to bottom. All of the code, as always, is linked in the description below in a GitHub repository, as well as a gist. So you can basically take a look at that also, and you can paste it into your own program and manipulate it however which way you would like. But starting first of all with the first thing, and that is a comment. We can actually comment the code. Now, this is not always necessary. And some people might actually say that commenting code is actually something you should not do. However, you should at least know what this is. So if you have two slashes, then you can write whatever you so choose over here in a comment. And that is not going to be executed, even if it is valid code that could be executed. It's just going to be interpreted as a normal line of words that you're going to read. And if you need a little bit more space, you can also do this slash star. And then a star slash over here at the end is basically going to be a multi-line comment. And if I were to hit enter a couple of times, you can see that it will increase the star. So every star is a new line in this multi-line comment. It can be quite handy for explaining stuff. And then we get to variables. Now, the first thing is I'm going to already throw a couple of different words at you that are going to be sort of a little bit of vocabulary. That's actually quite important. You have to learn a little bit of vocabulary and what each of these things mean. So a variable as the highest level overview, you can think of that as a certain data type that has a name and a value, right? That's basically it. A lot of people use this sort of simile or metaphor that is a bucket and that bucket has a certain type of value inside of it. So for example, you know, you could have a number and that number could be five. Or to be a little bit less abstract, you could have a variable that's called your age and your age is, let's say, 20 or 15 or 19. And you can see the way that this works is we're going to have a data type, right? And then we're going to have a name of the variable and it's always going to end with a semicolon. We're going to see this, as you already can tell, a little bit further down. And this would be called the declaration. So we're declaring a variable, right, of a certain data type with a certain name. Or we can also assign a value. So that would be a data type of a certain name. And then we're going to equal that to a certain value, which would be the value of this variable. And that would be called an initialization, which is basically the declaration right here that we've seen plus the assignment of the value. So that can be done in single step and that would be initialization or you can declare the variable and then assign a value afterwards. Now, what are these data types? Because that's actually the first step, right? Which data types are available to us? Now, those are going to get way more complicated further down the line. But for the time being, there are some basic data types that are very important and that everyone needs to know. And the first one is the integer. So integer store whole numbers, however, also including the negative ones. That's basically where the name integer comes from. You might have heard of this before in a math class. So there you go. And they go from, you know, minus 2 billion something to plus 2 billion something. That's what they can store so they can store a number between this number and this number. That's the general idea. And you can see that the way that we're going to declare this is we're going to write int. So int over here. And what's also very important, the casing matters. So you can see this all of a sudden, we're going to get a crazy amount of errors. No, it has to be exactly written like this. So the casing basically everywhere matters a lot. So whether or not it's a lowercase or an uppercase i actually does matter in both the name of the data type as well as the name of the variable. So that is very important. So you can see we have a declaration over here of an integer called points. And then in the next line, so that would be line 25 here in this case, we have an assignment of a value, which would be points is equal to 100. And you can see that every time that we're doing this, we have, we're ending this with a semicolon. And that is basically the idea that every line or every instruction that you give the program has to be ended with a semicolon. You will see certain lines that do not end in semicolons. So for example, if I scroll up a little bit, you can see there are no ending of semicolons over here because those are not really instructions. Those are sort of opening something, right, with the opening parentheses and stuff like that. So that is where a semicolon would not be needed. However, if we were to declare a variable or assign a value or initialize a variable, then in that case, we do need to add the semicolon to end that instruction. Now, integers are great, but what about floating point numbers over here? So that would be numbers with a decimal point over here. So for example, pi, right? 3.141592655 over here. That's as much as I know off the top of my head. And the idea is that those can represent decimal numbers, right? So numbers with a decimal point over here in this case, similar with like something like E, for example, or any real number. However, there is a thing with precision that can be an issue. I don't want to go into too much detail on this because the actual thing that's happening inside of the computer, I will actually link a great video by Computerfile done by Tom Scott in the top right corner in the 
part because that is that is actually a great explanation if you're really interested in how this like exactly works but the general idea is that if this is not really saved like this this is actually saved with scientific notation and scientific notation is just a number times 10 to the whatever power you want in this case to get pi over here we would want to have this number times 10 to the negative 8 and what can sometimes happen is because computers work in binary that there are some rounding errors that are basically introduced over here so that's why sometimes precision can be an issue but overall, for everything that we're going to do here in this case and also in Minecraft modding, most of this is not really going to be that much of an issue. Then there are Booleans and Booleans are actually fairly easy because they can either be true or false. So they can be either a one or a zero. That is another way to phrase this, right? So it's a one or a zero, true or false. For example, a Boolean could be, hey, did you like this video? Well, hopefully that's going to be true. If not, then try to make that true, of course. And you also can have a Boolean subscribed. That is false, but that might also turn true if, you know, if the series is good enough, then hopefully that is also going to be the case. But yeah, Boolean's actually quite important in the long run. There's going to be a lot of things, even though they might seem very, very trivial. They are actually the foundation of everything that is going to be happening in a little bit. And then last, but certainly not least, there are chars and strings or characters and strings. So a character in C is, for example, the grade B. Now, please note that there is a difference between the singular quotation marks and the double quotation marks. A singular quotation mark denotes a char, while a double quotation mark over here denotes a string. There is an insane amount of difference, even though it seems so small, because if I were to start writing in here, you can see this all of a sudden throws an error. Although if I start writing in here, you can see no, that's totally fine. So a char is a single character, right? So that could be a B or a seven or a minus here or an underscore or even a space. That is all a single character. While a string in a very, very crude sense is just multiple characters like next to each other, sort of in a line. You can think of it like that. Or you can even say it is a bunch of characters strung together, therefore the name string. We'll go into more detail for basically each of these different data types on what you can use with them, how you can convert one from the other, and how to basically use them to control the flow of your program with, for example, booleans, how to change certain strings, how to add to strings, how to output things. There are so many things that we're going to be able to do, but basically the important things are there are different data types, so there are different types of things that you can store in a variable and it's sometimes it's quite important to know what you're going to use for what the data types that you really have to think about are integers floats doubles booleans and then characters and strings those are really the only ones as i've said we're going to go deeper into each one of those in a little bit in the future tutorials also make note of what the vocabulary declaration, initialization, and assignment of value means. Those are basically going to be the three big things that you have to keep in mind in terms of vocabulary for variables. But that's going to be it for this tutorial right here. Next time, we'll continue a little bit with reading and understanding Java code. So going to a little bit more in detail on what is happening in this code over here. Hope to see you there. So, yeah.